Hey guys, what's going on? My name is Anton, and welcome to today's video for Honkai Star Rail. Now, what are we going to be talking about today? Well, we're going to be talking about Silver Wolf. Why are we going to be talking about Silver Wolf? Well, because Silver Wolf is currently uh, going to be having a rerun in an upcoming patch in version 1.5. And while she's had a lot of discussion around her since she first came out, that discussion is obviously ramping up with her upcoming rerun. And one thing about this discussion is that there is a sizable amount of people saying that you should not pull Silver Wolf. Personally, I disagree with that. I think you should pull Silver Wolf. I don't think she is some kind of must pull. If you don't have this character, you can't beat the game. I don't think there is a single character that is a must pull character in all honesty in the current game. Uh, the closest characters to that would probably be like Bronia, Fu, Shuin, Luocha kind of characters, but even they are just not must-pull characters. But I see three arguments against Silver Wolf, and I want to talk about them and talk about why I disagree with these arguments. So, what are these arguments? Well, they are that Silver Wolf is not needed, her weakness implant is no longer valuable, and number three, she is not used much in late game content. And I think each of these statements overall is wrong, I guess I'll say it. But some of them, in fact, each of them have a little bit of truth to it. So they're not outright lies, but they're not necessarily telling the whole truth, if that makes sense. And for the first one, Silver Wolf is not needed. Let's talk about that. Well, how to put it? People say you don't need Silver Wolf. This is very true. Like, I'm gonna be honest with you. Yeah, it is a true statement. Here's the thing though. You don't need Silver Wolf. You know what else you don't need? You don't need any limited five-star characters. You could theoretically complete the entire story that's out right now. And most, if not all of the late game in the form of MOC and Swarm Disaster, with only four stars. You don't need those Imbibitor Lunes, those Blades, Fu Shwins, Jing Liu's, whatever. Even Herta can beat MOC 10. So, I don't understand the argument of the, you don't need Silver Wolf. You don't, again, you don't need five-star characters. So, there is, it's just a fact of this game at the moment. However, though, Silver Wolf does offer something that no other character in the game does. Her weakness implant. Her, in my opinion, her core mechanic. And let's talk a little bit about that said core mechanic. So, for those who don't know, because I don't know, you're new. What does it do? Well, basically when you use it, this is a lot of words, and I'll basically sum it up here. If you want, I guess you could read it. But to sum it up, basically, she does some damage, single target, to a character, and she gives them a weakness, and that weakness will last for a little bit. And said weakness will be an element of one of the characters you currently have on the field that that enemy doesn't have. So let's say you have two quantum and two fire characters, and they're weak to fire. That weakness will always be quantum. And this, in my opinion, is why Silver Wolf is a great character. But this is also why some people say she's just not that good anymore because they will admit the Silver Wolf detractors, I guess you could call them, the Silver Wolf naysayers, they will say, yes, her weakness implant is kind of her core mechanic, but it is just not as valuable as it is anymore. And going into basically topic number two, her weakness implant is not as valuable now that we have more characters in each element. This is a statement that a lot of people say. I don't think that is true at all. At first, at a first glance, a first thought, this does seem logical, right? More characters mean you can theoretically just use whatever character an enemy is weak to. Let's say you're see you're uh, in MOC and you see the enemy is weak to, uh, let's say, Wind and Imaginary. You just use Imbibitor Lune or Blade, right? First off, you have to have those characters, right? Number two, they have to be built. Uh, so that means you have to have relics and uh, 
Well, we all know how tough it is to go, uh, get a character, a single character, well built because of Relic RNG. And with the rise of Mono Quantum, arguably, in my opinion, Silver Wolf's best team, this guarantees you will always have at least one team for MOC, regardless of enemy weakness. I personally don't have a Blade. I don't have a Imbibitor Lunate. I don't have Jing Liu. I still complete a lot of MOC easily. And why is that? Because I have Silver Wolf, so I can use Mono Quantum. So what if the enemy is weak to wind and I don't have a blade? So what if they're weak to imaginary and I don't have Imbibitor Lune? Bring in Silver Wolf and her friends. There we go. Now Xing Shui, who I use as the damage dealer, will rip them apart thanks to Silver Wolf. And this is really great for low spenders uh, or free to play players or even just newer care or newer players. Uh, and why is that? Because, you know, you sometimes skip out on the occasional DPS, like the Blade or that Imbibitor Lune. So this is also really great. Also, if you just want to personally, you know, try and manage your roles, you're like, who I don't really have a ice character. And, you know, that Jing Liu is uh, coming up and Jing Liu is really good, but I don't really have that many pulls and I don't want to, I don't want to bust out the credit card. So just really nice for free to play low spenders. Now, don't be fooled, though, and say, oh, well, this is only great for Mono Quantum, right? And as I make my account, uh, as I grow my account more and more, won't Silver Wolf's uh, play rate, inclusion rate drop? Not necessarily. She can work with most, quote unquote, mono element teams, mono fire, mono lightning, mono ice, whatever, especially, in fact, as more characters come out. An example of this, I feel, a good example of this would be mono ice. You can technically go Mono Ice right now with, I'd say, Jing Liu, Silver Wolf, of course, Japard, and something else. The problem is you want to be hitting, you want to always hit that either Ice Element or Quantum Element, depending on the enemy. And that fourth character slot is kind of tough to fill in because there isn't really a Quantum harmony character to buff up your character your damage dealer and there isn't really a ice character to buff up your characters your team the upcoming ruan may though is a harmony character and will help out that mono ice team so it's not true in my opinion that upcoming characters more characters in your pool of characters make silver wolf worse I actually think it's the opposite. I think that the more characters you have, the more theoretical mono element teams you can actually build with Silver Wolf. So, great. Also, her defense shred is pretty nice too. Some people like to argue, well, there is Pella. Pella also has a defense shred with her ultimate, which, yeah. She does defense shred. Here's the thing. It's not a lot. It is an AOE defense shred. I will give you that, but it doesn't reduce defense as much as, say, Silver Wolf's defense. So, personally, if it comes to pure defense shred, I actually do prefer Silver Wolf. On top of that, even if you are in the camp that, oh, just play Pella, just play Pella if you don't have Silver Wolf, you need two teams in MOC. You can only put Pella on one of them, so and you probably want to have some kind of debuffer on the other team. So, you know, Silver Wolf on one team, Pella on the other. And now for the next and final, the third statement, basically, and that is Silver Wolf is not used much at high levels. I don't understand this statement. I don't get where people are getting stats from. I honestly feel like when they're, if you were to ask them, they'd be like, hey, can you give a source on that? They'd be like, yeah, I made it up. I'm like, okay, because you can use, there are a lot of different websites out there and just third party apps that give you stats. They're all, they're all fairly accurate too. Um, but if you look at these third party websites, you will see that they're not technically wrong. And I will be using Pridwin here really quick for said stats. So right here, what you are seeing right now is some stats for MOC 
for MOC 10 and the character usage rate. Silverwolf is still really heavily played. She's been out for a long time and she's still the seventh most played character. That is pretty good in my opinion. Now, here's the thing. Technically, again, these people are not wrong when they say Silverwolf's usage rate, I guess if you could put it that way, her usage rate is trending down. They are not wrong. But from what we can see here, it's still at basically 50%. We'll, we'll do some rounding here, which is a pretty high, uh, high usage rate. Basically, every other team is using Silverwolf. So yeah, seventh most, char most used character. Now, if we scroll down a bit, there is this chart that I had uh, pre-prepared for this part of the stream, um, showing off a couple of characters that are all, in my opinion, relatively old. They've been in the game for quite a bit here. First off, we got Zila over here, Silverwolf here, Luolcha here, Blade here, and Kafka. Again, all characters that have been in the game for quite a while. Notice a pattern here with each and every one of these characters, except for Kafka. Every one of them has the line trending downwards. Now, why is that though? Does that mean every single one of these characters is bad now? No, of course not. No one's gonna go out and tell you, yeah, Luolch is bad now. No one's gonna be like, yeah, Blade's bad now. No one would ever say that. If anyone did say that, you'd probably look at that person and be like, you're crazy. What are you talking about? But for some reason, People will say that about Silverwolf when she's in a very similar spot. Her line, yeah, it's trending downwards, but again, so is everyone else's. Why is this? Well, there could be a number of reasons why all of these characters' lines are trending downwards. MOC weaknesses, number one. Um, character, or sorry, players will come in after a character got released and they missed out on the banner. So they're like, well, I'd like Luolcha. I'd like Zila, I'd like Silverwolf, et cetera, et cetera, but the banner happened in the past and I can't really pull them anymore, even though I'd like them. I know that's true for actually a few of my viewers that I hear over on Twitch who are like, hey, uh, I really like that Silverwolf character you use. Uh, how do I get it? Or like, do you know when a reroll or rerun's happening? And I'm like, uh, you'll just have to wait. But that's in my opinion, why? More and more people join the game, so that means more and more people who just missed out on the banners. Plus with more characters coming out, these said characters, these limited characters are more replaceable. We can use Luolcha as an example. Luolcha came out, there weren't that many sustainers around. Now, since Luolcha's come out, we've got more sustainers and not just more, really good sustainers too on top of that. You know, Fu Xuin, uh, Lynx, Huo Huo. So don't take someone pointing at stats like this and being like, yeah, look at this, it's trending downwards. Usage rate is trending downwards. Don't use, don't pull them. They're not as good anymore. And this is not even to mention her inclusion rate in Swarm Disaster, which I have, I believe, prepared as well over here. She is literally the fourth most played character in Swarm Disaster. Swarm Disaster is also what other people like to use as a quote unquote, I guess, late game content. So that's pretty good. So is Silverwolf a must pull? No, I don't think so. But Too Long Didn't Read, or sorry, Too Long Didn't Watch? I'd say Silverwolf is a great character. She's really good for teams, really good for her accounts. Uh, with her, you can bring any DPS character, any elemental DPS into a quantum weak enemy, and you can bring any quantum DPS into any enemy. Uh, really good at single target debuffing and defense shredding as long as I'd say there are like one big target. Uh, she kind of falls off when there are a lot of things you want to defense shred. And then at that point, I would recommend Pella though. So yeah, but still, I'd say easily she is one of the best supports slash debuffers in the game due to her unmatched flexibility in terms of team compositions. Uh, yes, Mono Quantum with Fu Xuin or Lynx, depending on who you want as your sustainer, Silverwolf, of course, and Xing Shui or Zila as a, as a DPS. And then a fourth slot being a flex spot for a, a buffer, like a Ting Yun or an Asta or a Bronya, is really good. She has a lot of other teams that are really good too. Teams like 
Mono Lightning with Jing Yuin or maybe Kafka. Teams like Mono Imaginary with uh, Imbibitor Lune is pretty okay as well. So, you know, she's also just a fun character. At the end of the day though, when it comes to pulling any characters, I like to say there are three things to consider. Number one, do you lack the type of character? Basically, are you lacking certain elemental DPSs or sustainers, for example, or I don't know, debuffers or something like that? Number two, do they unlock any playstyles that are good or you like? I'd say Silverwolf falls into this category. She helps unlock Mono Quantum. She uh, unlocks other Mono strategies too, and that's really nice. And third, most importantly, do you like the character design and their gameplay? And at the end of the day, if you don't like the character or don't like the design, probably skip them. Anyway, though, that is going to be my video for Silverwolf and why I think Silverwolf is still a solid character to pull for in Honkai Star Rail. However, what do you think, though? Do you disagree with anything I said? Do you think Silverwolf is overrated? Do you think, uh, do you think you should just skip her? Do you think you do you agree? Do you, uh... Do you think she's a must-pull even? Do you think she is even more pull-worthy than I'm basically hyping her up for? Uh, I'd love to hear your guys' opinions either way in the comments below. And are you also going to pull for Silverwolf if you don't have her? Maybe you're going to pull for her for her Eidolons if you do have her. I'd love to hear your opinion on that. I personally don't think her Eidolons are worth it, but I might even pull for an Eidolon or two. And if you guys just enjoyed the video in general, I'd love if you could leave a like or a comment down below. It always helps me out, and it always helps out the channel. And if you want to watch me play some Honkai Star Rail, you can go and check me out over on Twitch, at twitch.tv slash zeniton, where I stream pretty much every single day. And if you want to talk about Honkai Star Rail, you can go and join my Discord. As always, I will have a link to that down below in a pinned comment. Anyway, though, with that all said and done, thank you all again once more for watching this video. And I'll see you guys in the next one. Uh, bye!